That brings us to iPad. We think that iPad is the poster child of the post-PC world. The momentum behind iPad has been incredible and has surprised virtually everyone. We sold almost 15 and a half million iPads just last quarter alone. And to put this in some context, we sold more iPads in the fourth quarter of last year than any PC manufacturer sold of their entire PC line worldwide. We think this gives you an indication of the potential for this product. But you know, it's just not about the numbers. iPad is showing up everywhere in the daily lives of people, in their work lives, in their play lives, all around the world in tens of millions of people. And perhaps PC World said it best. The iPad is so ubiquitous and so entwined in mainstream culture already that it is hard to imagine a time without it. This is a product that is less than two years old. Now, when we set out to create the iPad, we set out to create not just a new product, but a new category. And we said that in order to do that, that the iPad had to be the best device for doing some of the things that you do most often. Things like browsing the web or checking email. Now this is a tall order, but when we asked the iPad users, they told us that's exactly what we had done. When we asked iPad users who had a notebook, a desktop, and a smartphone, their favorite device for email, they responded, iPad. For browsing the web, they responded, iPad. We asked iPad users who also had an e-reader what their favorite device was for reading books. They overwhelmingly said, iPad. We asked iPad users who also had a portable gaming device and even a gaming console, their favorite device for playing games. Their response, iPad. In fact, for so many activities, they responded, iPad. This is incredible when you remember that this device has been on the market for less than two years. Now part of the reason is the incredible bundled apps with iPad and the over 200,000 apps that have been custom built to take advantage of the big, beautiful, multi-touch screen. These apps are gorgeous and groundbreaking. They help you create or learn or do almost anything. Great educational apps like SolarWalk, business apps like StockTouch, incredible games like Infinity Blade. You won't find these incredible apps on other tablets. In fact, in, and in some estimations, there were over 100 competitive tablets that came to market just last year. You won't find that great experience. Let me give you some examples. This is a Twitter app on a Samsung tablet running on Android. You can see it's pretty basic. It kind of looks like a blown up smartphone app. And that's because it's exactly what it is. Compare that to Twitter running on iPad. You can view the tweets. You can see web pages and photos and videos that are mentioned in the tweet on the big, beautiful screen. And here, 
here it is for Yelp. You know, it looks like a stretched out smartphone app. Lots of white space, tiny text. It's kind of hard to see. Compare that to Yelp running on the iPad. Clearly designed to take advantage of the large canvas. And this is a key reason why momentum on iPad continues to build and the competitive tablets aren't gaining traction. Now, everyone's been wondering who will come out with a product that's more amazing than the iPad 2 with its big, beautiful 9.7 inch screen, super fast A5 chip, all day battery life, and elegant thin and light design. Everybody's been wondering this. Well, stop wondering. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Today, we're announcing the new iPad, and it is amazing. We've taken it to a whole new level and we are redefining the category that Apple created with the original iPad. It makes amazing improvements over the most fundamental features of the design of the device while retaining everything that millions of people have grown to love about it. I'd like to invite Phil Schiller up to show it to you. Phil? Thank you, Tim. Well, good morning, everyone. Did you want to know about the new iPad? I'm glad. First, new feature of the new iPad, the retina display. You might have heard that an iPad could have a retina display. But until you see it, you can't understand how amazing this is. We introduced the Retina display technology first on the iPhone 4, and it's incredible. And to this day, no one has yet matched that display technology in any mobile device. And we're going to bring it to the 9.7 inch screen of the iPad. Now this presents a problem for us in presenting it to you, because for the first time, an iPad has higher resolution than this entire display behind me. More pixels. So everything you see is going to be scaled down. That's a fun challenge, but we'll, we'll do our best. So for example, when you turn on that new iPad, you are going to see graphics, text, icons sharper than you can imagine. They're just beautiful. When you go to read a book, you're going to see text that rivals anything you've seen in print, in newspapers or magazine. Everything you do is just going to look stunning, surfing the web, reading your emails, and photos are just going to look amazing at high resolution on that gorgeous big display. And this helps customers around the world, particularly if they read in different languages, character-based languages like Japanese and Chinese. The fonts are amazing. It really is, is a big step forward. Well, the new iPad display is 2048 by 1536 pixels. And if you do the math really quick, you'll figure out that's over 3.1 million pixels on this display, the most ever in a mobile device. Put another way, many of you all have an HD TV at home. These televisions, 50 inches, 60 inches, have a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Here's an iPad scaled appropriately next to it. It has more pixels. Let's overlay the photos, the same photo as they could be displayed on each of these devices. You see the iPad shows over a million more pixels than your own HDTV does at home. That's incredible. Of course, to display that many pixels, we pack them really tightly. There are 264 pixels per inch in this display. And that is enough to call it a retina display. 
Well, why is that? Well, you may recall when we launched the iPhone, we said that the iPhone, when held at a normal distance, 10 inches or closer, has enough pixels that your retina in your eye can't distinguish those individual pixels. And yes, there's real math behind that. Experts agree with us. Well, the same is true of the new iPad. When you hold it at a normal distance, in this case 15 inches or even closer, your retina in your eye cannot discern those individual pixels. It is enough pixel density that you can't pick out the pixels. And the images on it look stunning. The new iPad display also has greater color saturation, 44% greater than the iPad 2. So side by side, you're going to see images just pop out. They are so much more colorful and richer in their detail. Now there's four times the number of pixels on the new iPad display. So it takes a lot of graphic horsepower to drive that display if you want to keep it smooth and fast and beautiful to use. Well, you know, the iPad 2 used the A5 chip, Apple design chip, which is the best chip in a mobile device to drive a great display. But we needed even more horsepower for this new iPad and its retina display. So we've created the Apple A5X chip. And what's the X for? Quad-core graphics. Quad-core graphics designed specifically for the retina display to drive just four times the number of pixels. Well, how does that compare to what others are using? Well, others are using chips like this NVIDIA Tegra 3. If you normalize its graphics performance at one, the Apple A5 was already twice as fast. And the new A5X brings four times the performance. It is a graphics powerhouse. So the new iPad has a retina display with more pixels than any mobile device has ever had. It is 2048 by 1536 resolution, over 3 million pixels. It has greater color saturation as the A5X quad-core graphics. This is the best mobile display that has ever shipped, and it's a real revolution. That's the first feature. The second feature, an eyesight camera. Well, you know, on the front of our devices, we have a FaceTime camera. It's most often used for FaceTime video calls that our customers love making. And on the back, we have a camera. And when that camera gets of such quality and capability that you're proud to use it as your everyday camera for photographs, we call it an eyesight camera. And the new iPad has a great eyesight camera. It's a five megapixel backside illuminated sensor. We brought the optic system from the iPhone 4S, five element lens, hybrid infrared filter on it. And we have an ISP built into our A5X chip to do some great software algorithms and capabilities on this for photographs. But of course, the ultimate measure of a camera are the pictures you take with it. So let me show you some pictures taken with this new iPad. The iPad has uh, auto exposure, so it gets great exposure, great color. It has auto focus. It's incredible at the detail it picks up, and you see that lens can deliver great edge to edge sharpness and detail. It has auto face detection, so you can take individual or group shots, it knows just what to do. It has auto exposure lock and auto focus lock, so you can compose exactly the photograph you want. It is just a blast to use. That's Derby, world's largest dog. <laughs> so it has a five megapixel eyesight camera, advanced optics with an IR filter, autofocus, auto white balance, face detection, everything to deliver a great photo experience built into an iPad. Number three. HD video recording, now a 1080p resolution. Full HD resolution, so wherever you are, you want to grab a video for work or play or school, you've got a great camera built in to do that with. Let me just play a very quick, typical home movie clip that you might grab with your iPad and its 1080p camera. Now it's great to have a 
high quality HD camera with you everywhere you go, but there's a lot more to it. We use that A5X chip to do some pretty advanced things. For example, image stabilization. So what we've got here is a video I'll show you of what it's like with image stabilization turned off and what it's like with it turned on. And it's always turned on, but I think you'll be able to see the difference here because we capture right from the sensor. So here's the video as if it were unstabilized. And now here's what our software does to stabilize it. It's really nice. I think they did a great job pretending there wasn't a camera in front of them as they walked along the dock, didn't they? So that's 1080p video recording, video stabilization. We do temporal noise reduction to help improve quality in low light situations. And it is perfect to watch these videos back on that gorgeous large retina display. Fourth feature, voice dictation. Of course, the iPad, like all great iOS devices, has a software keyboard from Apple that's built into all the software you use automatically. And now, you'll see there's a new key on the bottom, a microphone. So you can type, or you can just tap it, speak into your iPad, and it will dictate what you have to say. It works like this. It's day 12 here in Barcelona, comma, which means two more days left before we have to leave, period. I'm so not ready to go, comma, it's amazing here, period. And if I could somehow magically bring the weather here home with me, comma, I would, period. And that's it. That's how it translates what you say into the text you want to type. The new iPad supports English in U.S. English, British English, Australian English, French, German, and of course now, Japanese. So that's voice dictation. The fifth feature, next generation wireless. <laughs> now you know the iPad 2 has already had great wireless performance, and it supports networks like EBDO with a maximum theoretical downlink of 3.1 megabits per second, and it has supported HSPA, for example, on GSM networks, with, with a maximum downlink of 7.2 megabits per second. But now with the new iPad, iPad, we're adding a great deal more. We're adding HSPA Plus with a maximum downlink of 21 megabits. And if you haven't heard about this, it's great. Dual carrier HSDPA, which we're starting to see show up in Europe, Australia, and other places around the world, with a maximum downlink of 42 megabits per second. And of course, topping it off, long-term evolution, or LTE, which is a maximum of 73 megabits per second downlink. So the performance is amazing, and you're going to love using it on these high-speed new networks. So let me give you a, a couple everyday examples of how you might use this. Here we have an HSPA network being used by the iPad on the left, and we have LTE being used by the one on the right. These are actually recorded, so I can play them back, and you can see them right here on the big screen. And it's a simple everyday task. You're gonna, I'm going to click on an email that has a bunch of embedded photos and see what happens. So here we go. We select the top new email message that came in. And on the right, you'll see the photo will come in faster on LTE. In fact, the next large photo will come in. And the next one, before even the first photo, starts to show up on HSPA. So we're all done. We've got all five large photos on LTE. And we're still waiting even for the second one on HSPA. So that's one example of the difference of using it in everyday tasks, simply the things we download, applications, music, emails. Here's a different kind of example. We all like to do great things like watch videos on our iPad, surf the web to sites like Vimeo, and watch HD, high quality video. But if you don't have the high speed bandwidth, the best thing to do is just let it buffer for a while and wait, and then hit play. But what if you could start to watch right away because it could download the video faster than you can watch it in real time. So watch what happens. I'm going to hit play, and this is a great film, the bird film from Andrew Zuckerman Studios. And on the right, on LTE, it starts playing right away. And you can see with the progress bar on the top, it is loading the video faster than we can watch it in real time. On the device on the left, which is on EVDO, or we could have used GSM as well there, it's buffering the video, waiting to save enough frames before it starts to play. 
That's what we've been used to. On the right is what we're going to start getting used to. It fundamentally changes how you experience things like video. So that's what it's like to use these high-speed new networks. We're working with a number of carriers to support LTE on the new iPad. And we're working with AT&T, Verizon, Rogers, Bell, and TELUS. They'll be the first to be able to work with LTE on the brand new iPad. But we have other high-speed networks, as I've mentioned, around the world. Now, as you remember, with 3G, when 3G phones first started showing up, they actually have many different bands, so you've got different phones for different networks around the world. And over time, they start to come together. Well, the same thing's happening with 4G LTE. In fact, even more so. There are many bands around the world. So, for example, in the U.S., we'll have two versions of the new iPad. One for LTE bands to be used on the AT&T network, and another for the LTE bands on the Verizon network, because they're different. But no matter which ones you pick anywhere in the world, below that, they're completely compatible. They're 3G world ready. So whichever one you pick, you can roam anywhere around the world on the fastest HSPA or EVDO networks, and you have what you need. In addition, we've added software to make it a personal hotspot. So if your carrier supports a personal hotspot feature, you can share that high-speed network from your new iPad directly with up to five devices. And if you've ever used this, you know our software is state-of-the-art and so easy to use. So the new iPad has 4G LTE. It has fast HSPA plus and dual carrier HSDPA networking. It's 3G world ready. It has a personal hotspot. When you add all these networks, plus the Wi-Fi networking and the Bluetooth networking, it's no small feat. This new iPad has the most wireless bands of any device that has ever shipped. And it is truly revolutionary. So the new iPad, it has a breakthrough display, a retina display at 9.7 inches with over 3 million pixels. It has the A5X chip with quad-core graphics. It has a 5-megapixel iSight camera. It's 1080p video recording. It has voice dictation. And it is the most wireless bands ever in a device capped off with 4G LTE. Now, you may be thinking a lot of these technologies consume a fair amount of power. Four times the number of pixels, quad-core graphics engine, LTE networking. So how did it do on battery life? Well, you may recall the iPad 2 we claim 10 hours of battery life for most of the things you do. And when you're on 3G networking for wireless web, nine hours. Well, the new iPad delivers the same 10 hours of battery life for all the things you do. And when you're on 4G, nine hours. So the team has worked incredibly hard to deliver this kind of battery performance so you can use it all day long. Yet, it remains amazingly thin at just 9.4 millimeters, and amazingly light at just 1.4 pounds. So the new iPad comes in black and white. And you're probably at this point thinking, I want one. What's it going to cost? I am. So the new iPad, you remember the iPad 2 starts at 499 for 16 gigabytes. Well, I'm really excited to tell you the new iPad will be priced at just $499. It comes in three storage capacities, 16, 32, and 64 gigabytes at $499, $599, and $699 for Wi-Fi models. And for Wi-Fi plus 4G, $629, $729, and $829. The same prices as the iPad 2 before it. And the new iPad will be available on March 16th, and if, yeah, just one week. And if you want one as badly as I do, you'll be happy to know that the pre-orders start today. So on March 16th, the new iPad will be available in the US, Canada, UK, France, Germany, Switzerland, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Australia. A really big, fast start. But it doesn't stop there. One week later, we're adding 25 more countries. 
So we are going to have the fastest rollout we've ever had for a new device. So back to the software, because ultimately, this is going to be amazing when you turn it on. You're not going to believe how beautiful it looks. And the team has worked really hard to make all the software that comes on that iPad look gorgeous. So when you're surfing the web, Safari's been updated to take full advantage of that retina display. When you're reading your emails, mail's been updated to take full advantage of that retina display. When you're using your photos, the photo app has been fully up to updated to take advantage of all that amazing color and resolution. Everything's been updated. But as you remember with the iPhone 4, when it went to the retina display, developers didn't have to do anything and their apps looked better and we used scaling for the graphics and automatically sized the text, but they could do even more to make them better. So right out of the box, you'll start using your applications, you'll find they look great. Things are scaled up with the four times the number of pixels and text because of our text APIs and libraries look stunning. So everything will work great. But if the developer takes a little bit of time, just as they did with the iPhone, they can do things with their applications that are just mind-blowing, amazing, incredible, using that retina display and the A5X chip.